I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Uh, we're doing AP Physics 1, Unit 3, Work, Energy, and Power. This is the second video on energy, and I promised you this from concepts. So these are some concepts you might see on multiple choice or just need to know for problems. So let's just get started. We're going to try to do this quick, so don't waste much of your time. Seems like the last video was kind of long. We have a problem one. We have three slides in different paths here. We have in one, two, and three of the slides. We're going to ignore friction, the problem tells us. It's the same mass kid. He's going to set up at the slide, and he's at rest when he starts. And then he comes down the slide. Here's what they're asking. Which of these final velocities is greater? Now, you see this straight down, and you want to say one. But let's not jump to that conclusion, and let's, let's let this play out with the information we learned from the last video on energy. All right, first of all, if we are up here at the top, we have height. That means we have gravitational potential energy. There's no spring, so we don't have spring potential energy. And we are at rest. So velocity is zero, which means our kinetic energy is zero because we have no movement. Now, that's going to get converted as we drop. Like if we were here in the middle, we would have height and velocity. So we would have right here in the middle, we would have potential energy to do gravity plus kinetic, which you're going to need to know that in roller coaster problems. Not necessarily for this one, though. But now we're looking down here. When we get to the bottom, we have no height, so no potential energy due to gravity. There's still no spring, so no spring potential energy. And we have velocity, though, which means we have kinetic energy. So if we're doing our mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final, and we get to ignore friction, that's a big statement, then that means at the beginning, we only have potential energy due to gravity or gravitational potential energy. At the bottom, we have kinetic. I'm going to write this out. This is mg. H. This is one half mv squared. All right, we know those from our last video. And here's where in my classroom I start playing party in the USA music. We all have a karaoke, we dance in our seats because everybody brought mass to the party. It is on both sides. All right, so we'll play that in your head. You can listen to party in the USA while we solve for this velocity. I'm gonna multiply two by both sides so I get two uh, gh equals v squared. And then they're gonna take the square root so I get my velocity as the square root of 2 times g times h. Look at this. They all three have the same g, 9.81, right? That's the scalar quantity of acceleration due to gravity. They all have the exact same height. They're all starting at 10. So as long as they are on the same planet, they start at the same height, you get to ignore friction. Then guess what? They all have the exact same velocity. Velocity 1 equals the final velocity 2, which equals final velocity 3. Okay, perfect. Now another note to, to just know when you're doing roller coaster problems too, as this U, this potential energy due to gravity is decreasing as it goes down, your kinetic energy is increasing, of course, because it's losing height, so that means that your potential energy is going down as this gets smaller. And then your velocity is going to increase as your kinetic ener energy increases because mass stays the same. And as kinetic energy increases because potential is getting converted to kinetic, then your velocity is going to get faster. But they're all going to be equal. It's going to happen to all three of them, and they're going to be equal at the end. All right, now we're going to go over here to problem two. I have an object one and an object two. Object one has a mass one. Object two has a mass 2m. They're going to be hitting the ground at zero meters. We're going to ignore friction, another big uh, statement. And, uh, and really, I should say ignore air resistance or ignore drag. It, drag really is friction with the air fluid, but really for a better, better term, ignore it. let's ignore air resistance or drag. We'll say drag. Okay, now it says, hey, compare potential energy and kinetic energy between these two objects. So I'm just going to start with object one. And then I'm going to look at object two in just a minute. Uh, potential energy due to gravity is mgh. Now, they're starting at rest. They would have said that they're starting at rest, so you know you have no initial kinetic energy, no spring. So all you've got is your above ground, as if I'm holding this ball above the ground. Right now, it's at rest. No kinetic energy, uh, energy of motion, only potential energy as due to gravity. Now, it says, hey, compare it to the second one. Now, when they do this, if they say double the mass, triple the mass, quadruple the mass, whatever, seven times the mass, just put the number in the equation and see what happens. That's how, the best way to do that instead of trying to figure it out in your head. 
So uh, you can do, hey, I'm doubling the mass, so that's 2MGH. And you're like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, so this is MGH, this is MGH, so the only difference is twice. So the second object has twice the uh, potential energy due to gravity. Now, if they asked in terms of one instead of, then you could have said, hey, one has half the potential energy due to gravity as object two, or object two is twice as much. Okay, now let's look at kinetic energy. We're gonna do object one and object two again. Well, kinetic energy is one half mv squared. All right, for the first one. For the second one, again, just put in double. One half, two m, v squared. Okay, look, they both have a half, they both have a mass, they both have a velocity squared. When I'm comparing, the only difference is the two. So this one has twice the kinetic energy as well. So, object two has twice the potential energy, it also has twice the kinetic energy. Now here is the kicker though, what if they said, hey listen, an entirely different experiment, we now have uh, two objects that are both mass m, all right, but, and let's say they're going down the road, so they're going down the road, we have two objects, they're both mass m, but this one has a velocity, this one has twice the velocity, okay? So. And then I want you to compare their kinetic energy. Well, look at this. Kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. That's exactly your object one. If this is object one and this is object two. So object one is 1 half mv squared. Object two, though, look at this. You have to be, this one's tricky, tricky, tricky. I have the same mass, but I have twice the velocity. That has to go in the parentheses. So it's not going to be double the amount it's going to be four times because that two is squared. So for object two, the kinetic energy is going to be four times as much because look, they both have, um, sorry, this was object one. Sorry about that. This is object two. Let me draw a line there so you can see that. The first one was one half m because it just had a velocity. The second one was twice the velocity. Look, they both have a half. They both have a mass. They both have v squared. The only difference is four. This one has four times the kinetic energy. It's also why in car crashes, the higher the speed, usually the, the more damage and the more severe they are because you're taking in not only uh, just an increased velocity, it's an exponential, for your increased velocity, it's an exponential increase in your kinetic energy. You're squaring that. So that's why, um, why that is. Okay, so if you had the same mass again, these were like cars, you know, I didn't draw them like cars, but let's say our balls rolling, whatever. And I'm just comparing their kinetic energy. So watch that on that if they double velocity. If they triple velocity, then it's gonna be three squared, it's gonna be nine times, okay? Now, let's go back over here though very quickly and let's look at what my velocity looks like over here. We said, hey, this one with 2m has twice it has two times the potential energy. It also has two times the kinetic energy. What about the velocity at the end for both of them? Well, look, again, it's going from potential energy to all kinetic energy if we're ignoring drag. So that means we have mgh for the first one equals one half mv squared. It's gonna end up exactly like this. Masses got both brought mass to the party. Uh, everybody did two gh and equals v squared, you square root, you get two gh equals v. That's for object one. But look at what happens with object two here. We have the same thing. All your potential is getting uh, converted to kinetic. So look at this. We're gonna just put twice the mass. We're back to this problem where we're dropping uh, two objects, one with mass, one with two, uh, twice the mass. That's going to be two mgh equals one half two m v squared. I'm just putting the two m's in here. All right, look at this. My two m's, both, everybody brought two m to the party, two times the mass. And now I'm gonna solve, I'm gonna multiply this two by both sides for this half. So that's two gh equals v squared because these guys were already gone. Okay, now look, it's the same thing. 
It's the square root of 2gh equals b. They both started at the same height. They both have the same g, so they end up with the same velocity. This velocity is going to equal this velocity. Even though this one has twice the potential energy and twice the kinetic, it gets converted. The velocity is the same, and we're ignoring drag because they cancel out on both sides. All right. Thank you. I hope this helps. Thank you for watching. Hey, if you like us, be sure, and if you like this video, be sure and like us and subscribe if you want to keep up with our videos. We have plenty more coming on energy and power and that work energy theorem. So subscribe if you want to keep up with our videos. And thank you so much for watching and happy physics -ing.